Everybody, welcome to another installment of Show to Be with Mike G, the show of life, the show of traveling Europe, the show of being a brewer and starting a brewery. Yes, that's right. Today's guest is the president and one of the brewers at Blue Owl Brewing in Austin, Texas, Mr. Jeff Young. It's an interesting story with Jeff growing up in Alabama, becoming really fascinated with science and What was essentially an internship led into a big opportunity, a stint at the Black Star Co-op where lots of great brewing talent kind of emerged, even some distilling talent emerged. So we're back from the San Antonio Cocktail Conference 2017. It's time to get back to business with Austin Brewing History with Mr. Jeff Young of Blue Owl Brewing. Uh, around Birmingham. Around. Yeah, sometimes directly in Birmingham, but uh, maybe the reason, maybe I'm far enough away from it that I'm kind of giving it a little bit of uh, romantic yeah. nostalgia. <laughs> uh, but it's I, just I like that girl, painting. it's like, she was so pretty, she was so great, then, <laughs> right. God, she really did suck. That's actually the reality of it. It was horrible, you know? But yeah, because yeah, right. it's, I mean, it's everything that you would think of, you know, the negatives of living in the Deep South and the Bible Belt yeah. and a lot of kind of ignorance and just some shitty people, but uh, there was also the great just kind of friendliness that comes along with the with the South yeah. and um, just not so, like, overrun and uh, busy. Yeah. Uh, porch but, sipping, julep sipping on the porch. I always hope it. <laughs> Plenty of that. Yeah, that's sure. an amazing thing. Sure. Take some time out for it. You know, yeah, slow yeah, down. slower pace. I, I, did, I did enjoy that, but uh, maybe it was the, like, having to find... I always kind of thought when I was there, and it sounds a little corny now, but I was a little bit of the counterculture. Okay. That so, makes you know, sense. most yeah. of, of Alabama and the South, if you grew up there, you were kind of what, what you would imagine the stereotypical sure. Alabamian would be like. But if you were looking for something with a little more depth, like that's craft beer. Yeah. That was kind of when I, I got into craft beer was it was something that nobody was drinking. Mm. Uh, it was still... You know, NASCAR kind of Budweiser kind of place, right. but I could be like, "Hey, I, I know of this crazy uh, import beer that's uh, uh, Samuel Smith's Oatmeal Stout." You right, know, right. not that it was like some crazy special beer, but it's still for the pe- for the time and place. It's yeah. like, "Oh shit, what's that?" It sounds so different. Yeah, yeah, it was that was weird. Lindemann's uh, Framboise, oh yeah, for some yeah. reason was there. And I just remember doing these tastings and, and like, these are worldly beers. Yeah. Uh, and Did it make you have, like, this kind of more worldly feeling about your existence? Like, not to go too deep with it, but it it's connecting you outside of what is kind of this insular Southern culture. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you know? I, I definitely wanted to get away while I was there, and that's when I started traveling. Yeah. What, uh, took, what took you and your family went out to Alabama? Uh, we there? moved around a lot of uh, Ohio to Texas to Michigan to Florida to Alabama, wow. and all this was before high school. Yeah. Um, so we moved around a lot just because my stepdad's job wasn't yeah. like a military thing or anything special like same that. Same story, was... man. We have the same story. Exactly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thank God I didn't have to live in Florida, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I did live in Arizona for a bit. That's not, uh, like, yeah. wonderful. The Florida of the Southwest. That's true. Just a less wang shape. But otherwise, <laughs> it's exactly the right. same kind of thing. Well, so Alabama then, is that kind of where you spent what we would call those formative high school years? Yeah, so that would be high school, and then uh, I spent four years of college there, and then uh, I was doing electrical engineering, and Mm -hmm. then kind of got ambitious. I started traveling and wanted to be more worldly, and then got ambitious and wanted to do uh, a better engineering school, so I came out here to UT. Oh, really? Um, That was very disastrous. I I started on a Monday (laughs) and dropped out. Literally that Friday. No shit. So, yeah. you, it, so is it safe to say you finished your undergrad then in Alabama in that? In like, uh, I finished my math degree 
uh, there. Okay, okay. Started, did about three-fourths of my engineering degree, but just wanted to finish in like a better place. Yeah, yeah. And then when I got out here, um, it took me a year and a half to actually get in because I couldn't afford the out-of-state tuition. Yeah, it's so expensive. Yeah, it was really expensive. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to you know, hang out, enjoy this next year, work at Starbucks, right. and, and then... Do the Austin thing. Did the Austin thing, and it got the better of me to where... I just like couldn't refocus, and then really? when, when the year came back around, and I finally, you know, got in and was ready for classes, I, I just kind of I was like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, what t- like what change can come in a year and a half? I mean, that's, oh yeah, you especially know, yeah, twenty two, twenty one or twenty, or, yeah, somewhere yeah. in there around twenty two. My first time like really living, even though I'd traveled outside uh, the U.S. a lot and uh, Alabama, obviously, uh, that was my first time just kind of living somewhere where I was just out on my own and, yeah. and had Were you cl- such like, a good time. It's, well, at that time, because I guess I'm trying to place it, we're talking maybe 2000, 2001, 2002, something like that? Uh, yeah, I started, yeah, started 2003 is when I moved here officially. Because was, those were good years in Austin. I've <laughs> been here like since yeah. 2000 about, and... Yeah, that was Oh, good. yeah, and I live right on South Congress next to what's now, uh, was it Sea Boys or something? Oh, that yeah. That used to be Trophies. Trophies? Oh, man. <laughs> so we lived on the other side of the fence from Trophies, so we uh-huh. would jump over the fence, you know, go by where they had the peacock and right, right. Uh, uh, go in there, and it was just such a <laughs> grungy, Dude, uh, that bar, dingy you, place. I loved it. it it sticks on your shoes. It's that kind of thing, man. And I play. Yeah. I think I played a couple shows there. Definitely saw shows there. That was the only place in Austin. I mean, Emo's bathroom was worse originally, you know. But their bathrooms. But it, it, every time I was just waiting for a fight to break out. Oh yeah. Because it's oh, like yeah. you could just you put put your finger up like <laughs> the, it's perfect happen. pitch. This is good because there's yep. all different kinds of ages, the price yep. is right, and all that stuff. Yep. So you lived like right down there then. Or yeah. Right so there? that kind of became our place, which was yeah we all fights we saw people just oh, yeah. having sex out in the open just crazy shit like that of course tons of drugs yeah uh and just we just lived on right there on south congress That's amazing at that time, uh too. leslie uh would come by and bathe in our swimming pool that yeah. was right there <laughs> which was a, a is this the spot that's like right next to trophies uh yeah, it's called twenty twenty. Yeah, my like friend a, a used condo, to live there. Actually, really? Yeah, it, who's it, your friend? It was same Scott, but this was. Or maybe friends of bad word now since I don't care for them much. But nonetheless, <laughs> yeah, this was, I think, a little bit. This is like 2005 ish, mm. 2005, 2006. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you were still there, you lit. I would. I went in there all the time to go really? pick him up for practice and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a cool place. So he lived like in the courtyard, or did he live over by the pool? I think he lived in the courtyard part. Okay. Yeah. It was you- so much fun. Yeah. yeah. It, it was <laughs> just like that was my. Like realizing that there's much more in Birmingham, I, I seeked out being yeah. different and and finding uh, something that set me apart, which is kind of where I started uh, beer and actually kind of science and chemistry type stuff yeah. because it and that kind of place being being smart and doing science is kind of isn't it kind of like <laughs> a witch? Yeah, you're a w- you're you're not a good person. Yeah, yeah, college boy. I was college called a college boy. boy quite a few times. I worked at a mine. Uh, oh, really? How, like, yeah, what that's how I got through um, uh, calcium carbonate. So it was like a lime quarry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I worked probably about six years, or ever since I was 18 to for a while after that uh, worked. And it was just like a hard job, a gross job, mm-hmm. you know, just working in the the – Heart of the Alabama, the heat, the, yeah. the working in really bad conditions, but it's, uh, it paid well. What I th- I think it was like thirteen dollars an hour, that's and I pretty was like, good. I've had a mi- yeah, eighteen. Dude, well, especially really in good. Alabama because my apartment was two hundred seventy five dollars a month for like a two bedroom Jesus. down there. So yeah, so that's this great, is how yeah. I like started saving up to um, start traveling. This is how uh, I started. I, I paid my way through brewing school. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and and yeah, it's just brewing school. pros and cons, I guess, to all of it. Where so where were you traveling at that point? Because it seemed like you got a leg up on other people. You did a bit younger. I, I did. I, I really wanted to go for it. Uh, did a quick trip to Ireland and thought that was super cool, but mm-hmm. didn't think I did it right because I went there and it was my first trip out of the country, and yeah. I just didn't think I was really like you know I was like doing very touristy things sure. and didn't really know how to get outside of that. So then I was like, well, fuck it, I'm gonna save up. 
don't know how much it was, like four or five thousand dollars, buy a backpack and a ticket for three months, and then just try to go, you know, as many places I could throughout Europe yeah. and, and Asia and, and like Morocco, North Africa, and just spent three months just kind of walking around. Did you? Uh, you lived the dream. Uh, I, it was <laughs> awesome. Uh, I mean, it was really tough. It was, you know, at the time, it was, there was some romanticism about it, but, yeah. you know, once you finally got down to it and you're alone and you're, like, I was in the middle of Turkey sitting in this, like, hotel room with, uh, nothing. I, at that point, I just had a pillowcase I was traveling with. I dropped all my stuff because I, I just had too much shit. Hobo Such Jeff. A, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just had a pillowcase with like a few changes of underwear. It was just, uh, you, you know, you never. I, I never felt so like disconnected or alone. I was just, in the, you know, so far away yeah, from yeah. everything, and it was really tough, and it, it was, you know, scary and lonely. But you really learn a lot, like when you're put in such extreme. Absolutely. situations or you put yourself in such extreme situations were you single at the uh, time going there yeah yeah oh, that's, even, that's good too yeah kind of cool to meet a lot of different ladies from around the world well it's an interesting uh, thing regardless if it's romantic or not yeah Meeting people oh, yeah for people sure. are amazing and so you know as i've said multiple times to people there are only a couple things left in art that you have to experience in person right music you can kind of experience it how you want when i was a mm-hmm. kid that wasn't the case there were no ipods there was no mp3s right but right. food and drink that's it. That's yeah. the last real way that you can go and bond with anybody in any city. So did you ultimately eat and drink your way through that trip too? Although uh, that can be expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't drink a lot uh, back then. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a big drinker. That yeah. was like right before I started kind of getting into craft beer. As, it was all that loneliness. You had to yeah, drink yeah that's way. all I had with me was my loneliness. <laughs> Uh, it was my cup every night. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. I was a very introverted person growing up, kind of awkward because I, I very awkward because I moved around every year of my life. So yeah. I never really like formed very well as a, as That's a, as a total, child. It's us. We have to rely on ourselves. That's it, right? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. the only constant. Yeah. Our friends are never, you know, you, bu- you build new friends and things, yep. but then you move away. And it's you like, move away. Uh, so what that left me with and, and maybe you're the same way is it just left me with kind of a not knowing you know very introverted not knowing how to not be introverted like how yeah. do i just you know strike a, a conversation what do i have to say that's of worth yeah. you know how do i how do i interact and it was a really uh you know when you kind of throw yourself in the middle of it you don't have any choice and that made it really kind of emotionally hard because it wasn't good i wasn't you know, I wasn't like this Smooth. agrarious, yeah, yeah, dude. I was just some shithead from Alabama who, you know, didn't really ha- have done anything interesting yeah, yeah. Or, or that, you know, I, I would say that was interesting to other people and just kind of had to see what happens. And it was, a, uh, you know, it, I, I think it really helped me turn around. It wasn't this like dream, you know, journey. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of memories from it and there are definitely some great times, but you know, I think more kind of fundamentally it just, Earned, was was kind of the pivoting point. Uh, it's like a boot camp, wasn't it? Yeah, kind yeah. Of like a communication, pretty, pretty extreme, yeah. extreme. Like, yeah, yeah. It kind of forces you to to be like that. And then when I came home, I kind of felt like, wow, now I have something that I can talk about with other people. Yeah, absolutely. So I started getting into you know the countercultural kind of stuff in in uh, Birmingham, which was more of like the indie music and uh, good shows come to Birmingham. And, yeah, there actually there were a ton, and and it, it's just such an unassuming place. Sure, uh, I'll say this is probably a bad example, and you can make fun of me, but uh, no, I don't. Um, I remember uh, who are they? The Kings of Leon. Oh yeah, uh, when they were good, know, still. Yeah, when they were good, when they were like a southern, <laughs> yeah. southern rock kind of uh, homage uh, to like the Almond Brothers or something, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, they were so cool, yeah. and and uh, you know they came through town. And I was like, wow, this is this is this is neat. And then I started finding other people that thought it was neat. And then eventually kind of got some confidence to uh, come here to, to Austin and, and just like, fuck it, I'll go see what happens. Yeah. Try to come out to school. Did you come out or, alone or did friends come with you? Or? Came out alone, uh, but I, I knew uh, at least one person, yeah. if not a couple people. Um, so they, so I, I, I stayed with them and then, you know, just met a lot of people. And, and then for a year and a half, just got into a crazy amount of debt. You know, just kind of drank. Hey, and, and I get that. I <laughs> yeah. really do. <laughs> so it didn't work. Dropped out of uh, engineering school. Uh, thought about joining the the navy. Kind of went Navy. Through some of that shit. That's a good. That's a good branch. I hear. 
I was looking for anything, man. <laughs> I was looking for anything because at that point, you know, no, uh, wasn't thinking about craft beer other than or, or actual brewing other than, you know, the people that sit around and, uh, you know, think, oh, it'd be cool to to make a beer and call it this. Like right. usually, usually it had like a funny name. That was that's like, the why best I wanted part. To become a brewery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so that wasn't really a thing yet. So uh, after I dropped out of school. She said, shit, I got to cut my losses, go back to Alabama. You finish. did? Yeah, so I, I finished a uh, chemistry degree. I didn't even go back for the engineering because I didn't want to do that anymore. I mm. uh, started thinking about brewing when I was back there, went through, uh, signed up to uh, American Brewers Guild, okay. is what it's called. It's, it's based out of Vermont, um, sometimes out of out of California. Uh, went through that. It was just like a mostly a correspondence course. And then... How long was the... How long did it take? Is it months or weeks or... Months, uh, I think it was like six months of correspondence, a couple weeks of on-site, and mm-hmm. then I did a, an apprenticeship at, at Founders for, for a summer. Oh, wow. Um, and Did it start to make sense at that point? Or like, oh, maybe this is the purpose? Maybe oh, this yeah, is absolutely. And, and probably, even, probably the point that that happened was when I, after I was done with the correspondence, went... Uh, to the on-site up in Vermont, mm. you know, and it was, it was really nice kind of November, um, November, December, and, you know, just really pretty up there. And when I got up there, just being around these other people that are industry, like that were, you know, also trying to become yeah, brewers. A lot and, in common with these guys, right? Yeah. And I was just like, wow, this is, this these people, I... Not like they were the coolest people ever. They, no, but I, brewers I, I are just, not the coolest people. No, they really are. <laughs> a lot of nerds. But I, I, I really just enjoyed, it just felt like right. Felt like home. Yeah. And, and that's when, just in that week, I was like, holy shit, this is, this is what I want to do. Like, yeah. it just all kind of clicked. Made How old sense. were you when, you when you did that stuff? Still that was probably about 25. That's real young to have a purpose. I commend you for that. Yeah, well, it was a whole lot of... No, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I went through a lot of purposes, you know, before that, and it was really nice to find something that I really liked. So yeah. then it was just like full steam ahead. So that's when I, I uh, left the brewing school on my way home. Was just so jazzed up. So I was just driving from Vermont. Uh, actually, I didn't have a house at that point. I, I just kind of picked up everything, left, put out. Uh, uh, had all my stuff with me yeah, in yeah. my car. Like if I couldn't fit in my car, I didn't sure. take it with me. Um, so I had nowhere to go, but I could just kind of stay in Ohio with some of my family. But so driving back, I started making phone calls and and called up uh, Dan Carey at New Glarus. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, can I have a job? Uh, <laughs> How do those conversations go, by the way? Uh, he was I, I I respect him a lot. And I almost, I kind of hear, he's probably only said like a few sentences to me, uh-huh. but I hear those sentences. They resonate. Just about, yeah, every time. I I, I think I'm trying to be him because <laughs> uh, I was just a dude, just left brewing school uh-huh. and, you know, wanted to be his quality control manager. Okay. And I kept calling and, you know, sending some emails like when I could and, and, you know, he finally got back to me super nice and I you know I wasn't trying to like bug him or anything I was just trying to be like hey you know I'm, I'm really want to really want to talk to you yeah and he was just like yeah I appreciate this um we'll get back to you I I he just he was saying that he doesn't take these kind of decisions very lightly he really spends his time yeah, you know trying to find the right person I'm like yeah yeah I, I get that even though I'm just like super anxious he says mm-hmm. he actually doesn't hire a lot of Home brewers or or brewers because really yeah because does he like, want to teach teach him like so no because he he just wants hard workers that oh, care yeah. about whatever they're doing as opposed to like fanatics that I mean I say fanatic no I but know, you, I get a what you're word, saying but yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. a homebrew dude who's like I haven't I've done like five test batches right. and now I want to you know run your brewery that's a great point uh, like uh, the the pre celebrities. Like yeah. they kind of do like you should see my garage. Right? Yeah, they're just like they want to be Never known. For this about thing. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just... a good way to put it. And and, and you know, I, I could see how he could see, like you know, someone like me being that person. And and I got that. And I really respected it. And I I didn't get the job. Um, it actually went to the dude who started Omegong. Okay. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I can't remember his name now. But he was you know he's really a high highly respected dude yeah. too. And then. Uh, 
that got bought out by by Duval and and he kind of jump ship or something like that yeah, but yeah. I was like wow you know I if I'm going to get if I'm going to miss this job to anybody you Not know so bad. like yeah respect to that guy it's like oh yeah well my wife cheated on me with uh, Ryan Gosling okay <laughs> fine <laughs> yeah. fine right get one All let's right. still get you get yeah cuz <laughs> it's like you know you think about the odds of it like it's so unlikely. I'm all right with. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm comfortable with those odds. I'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, but do you, what if you had went in and, and said, "Hey, I've worked in mines and I'm a hard worker." Do you think it would have been a different conversation? Maybe. I, I think I tried to present that because I'm I'm proud of my work ethic. I've always worked hard. I, I've worked from like since I was 14, working in, in warehouses mm-hmm. and uh, you know quarries, and you know I'm I'm not against really working and then I like to use my mind you know so I started studying science and engineering so uh, you know I kind of I'm proud of my background and you know I I'm I'm just proud of it you know so I I, well you worked hard I don't think yeah I don't think if anyone saw that one was unimpressed with like worth work ethic then you know so be it then I don't need a job there yeah for they were not Uh, seeing you for the talent that you've got yeah you know um but it just didn't work out, and that's fine. I still like that is like, I still want to have this conversation. I have these kind of uh, daydreams of sitting down with Dan Carey because I, I just have so much respect for what he's done with New Glarus mm. without selling out, without expanding beyond his own state, right? And still just making some of the best like award winning beers and and having creativity without ever sacrificing quality and and. Uh, it's just kind of everything that I want. So I, I almost now just kind of want to keep that as my little, uh, um, you know, up on the pedestal. Yeah. Um, What's if that, if you were to write a book, that'd be one of those moments, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. And so you take the rejection, but positively though, mm-hmm. and are you headed back to Texas then in this single car that's got all of your possessions? Or are you headed back to... Uh, I was just going to Ohio at that point because uh, I left Alabama. I was done there, loaded yeah. up my car, went up there. Um, and at that point, I just, you know, I felt like I had a few weeks to see where I wanted to land. Yeah. Um, called people, called Harpoon, um, had a good interview out there for their quality control lab. So again, like this wasn't even a brewing thing. This was, I wanted to be a brewer, but I felt like my background... Uh, was more of of being in a laboratory. Yeah, because when QA, I was, I guess, is that, is yeah, 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 that too? yeah, that was. Um, so when I was working at the quarry, I, I, I was a uh, chemist, mm. and you know, I studied chemistry. Well, for yeah, I mean, you've years, got all so. the, the, you get the chops. Yeah, it, so you know? I was kind of excited about like that's that's my in. That's what I have to offer more than just being a, a homebrew. And I didn't even really homebrew. I, I was never like a big homebrewer. I yeah. didn't enjoy it. Uh, but I enjoy the chemistry and working on the laboratory. Um, so, you know, Harpoon, uh, they offered me a job uh, in their laboratory. And uh, Boston was just was too expensive. Yeah, But and, you did take the gig? No. No, you no. didn't take it? No, I turned it down. I, I was really excited because it was the first brewery to offer me something. And it was a big brewery. Yeah. And, you know, I'd heard of them. So that's cool. But I was just like, I can't live out there. I don't want to, like, struggle like that. Um, called up Red Hook. Uh, they talked me out of a job because I, I <laughs> wanted to work in their quality control yeah, yeah. lab. And the, the lab manager called me up and, and was just like, why do you want to work here? What do you think it's going to be? And I was like, what? Yeah, I that's do so these. strange. Yeah. yeah so uh, uh, she she talked me out of it. Just be like, you're, you're not going to enjoy it. It's not, you know, you're just going to be doing these. How are they rooms. ever going to fill that position? <laughs> <laughs> well, they need to fill it with somebody who's not like, you know, I think she knew I had... Uh, you know, a lot of uh, maybe you're overqualified. And, yeah, you know, and and I can understand that too because yeah. you don't want to fill this job with somebody that you know immediately is going to get bored and wants oh, to totally. leave. So she talked me out of that job. So she's like, "Fuck it, I'm just going to go back to Austin and uh, see what happens." Yeah, and came back in 2006. And a week after I got back, I got an email from one of my brewing buddies uh, who I met up in in uh, Vermont, mm. who lived in Austin, who sent me a flyer that. Uh, was about this meeting where there was a group of people that wanted to do a co-op pub. Yeah, okay. I, that I, was see, cool. I see where this is trying yeah, to do, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go check it out. He didn't even go. He was like, yeah, this sounds dumb. Uh, <laughs> so I went and checked it Little out. Little did he know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went to that meeting and then, you know, met uh, 
some of the people that are going to be, you know, closest to me for the next decade. Mm. And that's, you know, like Stephen Yarrick, who, uh, uh, so obviously we're talking about uh, Black Star Co-op Pub mm-hmm. and Brewery. So, you know, that uh, um, Stephen had the idea. He wanted a pub that was a neighborhood pub that was owned by the neighborhood. You know, right. he had this idea of this kind of like loyalty that comes along with you, this being your place. Right, right that you go to very british pub kind of feel yeah, it's a social house i mean really right? yeah yeah Playing yeah the public people. in-house and remember in 2006 like you know 2006 was not 2016 austin craft beer scene there was oh there's not <laughs> there was hardly anything yeah. out it was it was like the core people the independents the real yeah. ales and the the live oak and do you um, remember and i think this was around that same time because i remember i started seeing people part of the co-op they would have signs yeah please they they would have signs in their lawn that says I'm a owner of like, yeah, yeah, yeah I am an owner yeah it was I was like what is this place is this some kind of metal club <laughs> you know because it's like oh yeah it's like, and it's just it's a very interesting time in Austin in that way you know yeah yeah it was at that time and now that we can kind of look back and see what was happening you know around us at that time um, you know I think at that time we I, I, we were doing something i think pretty special oh, and unique here in basically Austin. basically we're running a brewery i mean yeah were, yeah you know? so, so we built that and and uh you know making it a cooperative uh there wasn't there isn't really anything like that out there now there's there's quite a few yeah. of them what was your what, what capacity did you, did you join the group were you brewing were you quality were you serving uh so i i i ran the brewery so oh, I, amazing I, okay yeah so started it there and just became the basically the the director of the brewery wow. um, over time and and uh, designed built uh, the brewery itself um, designed you know with of course some some collaboration and and you know a lot of groupthink with uh, the different beers so you know like Vulcan they all have uh, Vulcan and high esteem recalcitrant dock dock hand mm. uh, all those were just like very early kind of ideas of what we were what we wanted to That's do crazy. um were people how were people feeling like how was the public feeling about that spot i think it's always been warmly received yeah yeah it's interesting uh because you know now i can kind of look back at it and i'm not in the middle of it and i yeah. think i can be a little more unbiased about about what it is and you know there's a lot of really uh, uh just good good ideas what am, what am yeah. i trying to is it say like a think tank is that, is that kind of what you mean? Or like that the good stuff comes good out intentions. of Good Maybe intentions. Good intentions. <laughs> you know, it's a li- good incubator, but yes. maybe people don't make it to, to their dot release. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you had the idea of, of course, a, a non-hierarchical uh, members or, or workers assembly. So we had no managers, uh, no leaders. Everybody was uh-huh. on the same level. Uh, everyone got paid the same amount uh we Dude. didn't take tips so you really? know the wait staff yeah the wait staff um was making you know sometimes up to twenty dollars an hour wow uh the everybody can make even in the kitchen like 24 dollars an hour which is which is still kind of unheard of in in yeah, the uh in the industry so uh there's a lot of really good things that came out of it uh centered around these good intentions but also a lot of these good intentions were maybe kind of business unsavvy or, right. or a little naive you know it's like you know there's a, a joke waiting to happen that says how many brewers does it take to screw in a light bulb <laughs> <laughs> right. and somewhere there's a guy saying this is how you do it and somewhere there's another guy saying oh i can do it better just mm-hmm. let me do it so i imagine that the egos started to flare and that people you know there's got to be some central point of management to your point and if there's not how does that it's like a mutiny on yeah. the bounty man like how did it work out yeah, uh, <laughs> at times it worked out great, and at times it, it did not work out. You know, if, if there's anything to be said about it, I, I've been in just as many non-cooperative yeah. businesses that had just as many problems. Sure, but, you know, just different, different types, problems. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, so it, it has a lot of good advantages. Um, but I, I've kind of just positively seen it as now an incubator for yeah. for people. A lot of people um, that started there got a really good opportunity, made a really good amount, had freedom to. Kind of find themselves, mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then the experience to just jump off from that and, and go do their own thing, like me, me included. Yeah. Um, 
So I ran the uh, brewery for four years. Took about well, what did it take? Two years to kind of come up with the cooperative structure. Uh-huh. Two years to come up with the money and build it. Uh, and then I was there for about four years. That's a long time. Yeah, did, uh, did, eight years. At that point, you're starting to kind of feel like Austin is your place. Mm. That, that you're, that's where you're coming to be creatively, professionally. Absolutely. Like I just couldn't imagine. You know, all the bitching that I do or anybody else does about Austin now yeah. or, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, I could. I just can't imagine myself. And I try to imagine myself in these other places. Right. I'm just like, nah. That, you know, I got a lot going for me here. I like. You know, I know a lot of. Yeah. of the, people and the places and and this is just this is my home way more than it ever was in any of those other places right you know, that, I, that i lived in because it's you know we're all searching for something for purpose as you kind of mentioned it i keep thinking about the jerk too by the way when i think a special purpose it's a, it's a <laughs> joke there but uh-huh. <laughs> but you know that's what austin becomes and how do you feel about uh, this is a really weird sentiment to me coming from people that have lived here a far shorter amount of time than you and i but like how do you feel about the people that kind of claiming Austin and saying no one should move here? Isn't that what made it good in the first place? Is all the, d- the different kinds of people? Yeah, yeah, I, I I would agree with that. I I don't know. I've I've tried to remove myself from this conversation yeah. enough because I do have my own personal kind of feelings about it. But if there was ever somebody who even like said exactly my own feelings to mm. me, you're like shut up. <laughs> you know, like what, what do you know? Who do you? Who are you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just try to find my place here, and and if ever I'm out, I recently made the mistake of going out to Rainy Street and, and oh West yes, Six, like in one night, uh, uh, some birthday. One parties. night, really? Hmm? God bless you. To yeah, yeah, one night. One <laughs> night. Yeah, we did both. And by the end of the night, I was just staring down at the people walking by, just like so bitter and, yeah. you know, sipping on whatever little whiskey drink I, I was having then. And, and I was just like, God, this is so unhealthy just to have this hatred here. I'm Absolutely. just hating people for, for no good reason other right. than we're a bunch of drunk fucks. And that was one Sure, of them, but I people guess. will be people. <laughs> Why should it be they treat each other so awfully, right? So, yeah. but, but that's a good point is that it's easy to go there. It's mm-hmm. easy to go like, that guy is a real dipshit. <laughs> but but to kind of stepping away, because yeah. now you own a business. Mm-hmm. Now you have employees. I'm sure you have investors or maybe not. But, yeah. you know, you, you you say God bless everybody. And I'm not a religious person. I'm just saying in the general sense. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Just let them be their own yeah. dickish selves. Yeah. Everybody's selfish at times, you know. Yeah. But you're right. It's hard to watch, you know, places like Rainy and stuff. It's like, I've, I'll go down there. Black card's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, half step. But. Beyond that, it's like, do I really want to rub elbows with dudes I don't want to get to know? Yeah, yeah, it puts me, it puts me in a negative space. And you know, again, I can, I can, you know, more power to them. Let them be whoever they want to be. Yeah. But I, I can at least prevent myself from being in the situation. That's you know, true. just, yeah. I just don't want to be there. So my goal, in a more positive approach to kind of modern Austin. And, yeah. Uh, my short time here is just focus on the places that I do enjoy, the, the places that I can still go to that surprise me, and, mm-hmm. and the people that are still just, you know, so laid back and cool. Like, like yeah. from what I remember when I was 22, 22 years old, coming here and just, you know, it sounds again, it sounds corny, but I just thought everybody was so laid back and cool. I was yeah. just like, I could talk to anybody here, uh, and that that maybe is is what kind of brought me out to Austin, like that core thing, just in the same way that, you know, going to the brewing school and just being in that people and uh, that group of people and just being like, you know, this feels right. And, yeah. and that's why it kind of leads me there. So all of this is, is more about just kind of finding my connection with, with groups of people. I'm never yeah, going to love everybody. Or... No, and you don't have to. And the thing is, is like, you can't, if you have stuff in common with every single person, try to relate with every single person, that becomes really trying. And then it's almost uh, contrived too. So it's like it feels contrived. It yeah, does, right? Like, and I've had people that I've interviewed that it's like we we could drink and stuff, but like I don't know if I want to hang out with you, yeah. you know. And but the, that's okay. Yeah, it's people again. Yeah. If people are interesting, even if they're dumb. They're like they're <laughs> they're particularly interesting. Yeah. So tell me, kind of this transition then was the brewery the next step for you after the co-op, or did you have some inter- intermittent stuff? No, that was it. Um, it it happened very kind of naturally, organically, and you know I wasn't I wasn't itching to leave Black Star, yeah. although started you know kind of started thinking about it. You know, probably Did you get the itch. 
I was entrepreneurial to, itch. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it was uh, exasperated by the fact that I was doing the expansion project for Black Star. Uh-huh. So you know, I was kind of leading the uh, committee to find another location and uh, build another place, the mm-hmm. Black Star 2.0. And you know, going out there and just kind of getting back in that like creating entrepreneurial kind of yeah. uh, mindset made me just think. I could do this for myself. You could do this for yourself. <laughs> uh, That's the notion that we all have. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know, I could probably just do this. I don't have to work yeah. for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then it just kind of, just kind of more organically happened. I thought, okay, well, let's, uh, I want a business partner, so I don't have to do all that kind of bullshit. Mm-hmm. So um, I enlisted a friend who had also worked at Black Star, Susie Schaefer. Um, and then between myself and her, um, I approached three people that I knew from Black Star that were fans of Black Star, investors of Black Star, sure. you know, people that that um, liked being in the scene and liked, you know, uh, being being financially part of the scene. Yeah. And approached each one of them and told them my plan, and each one of them were on board. And then we just <laughs> we were done. Well, and we had we that's had the incredible. money. We had the plan. Yeah, I think you should leave, Jeff. That was way <laughs> that's way too easy. It was <laughs> so easy that it finally caught up with me because that's ah, that's, that's how go. the world works, right? Yes. Is, is that was really easy. It took us about two months to form the business, raise the money, find a location, and then it took like a year and a half to. Uh, build it, go yeah. through the construction phase, work with the city landlord kind of issues. Um, I mean, we, we even had the equipment sitting there for almost six months without being Can't able to use it. Cause yeah, it. cause yeah. like everything, we already bought everything. We were just waiting for the, the place to be built and uh, inf- inspected and finished. But did you feel comfortable with the kind of, I think I look back at the forecasting piece cause you're talking about people that saying I'm there they want to invest in businesses whether it's alcohol or something else but how do you did you feel comfortable like projecting how much money this thing this idea was going to make because that's something you got to just feel out in the dark anybody does start well, a new business. yeah yeah it, it's it's definitely a shot in the dark you know kind of regardless of how much you, you think you know or don't know because it just you know can just change overnight yeah. the scene can oh, change yeah. which it, it you know during Black Star's time, the scene was constantly changing, and we had to kind of keep adapting or not adapting. And then, um, even with Blue Owl, from the year and a half that we kind of announced that we were open till mm-hmm. after that, there was a whole other wave of of breweries Everywhere. that started opening up, and you know we were kind of part of that. Um, but you know, I had enough friends and resources from the industry that I was able to get you know businesses that had only been open a, a handful of years. Yeah. Kind of what what they've found to be true some over the case studies, which yeah, is some very case studies that are yeah really accurate. Like like you talked about Josh Hare at Hops and Grain, he was really helpful because he's in the same area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he'd been around about four years at, at that time, same amount of time as Black Star, um, but at least kind of had pretty good idea of what what the industry was like then, what the industry was like in that area, mm-hmm. and then you know was doing something kind of similar or kind of a similar setup to what we were doing. So was, we were able to get pretty good projections and actually hit the projections really nicely, if not exceeded them. Um, I think the the issues more of just kind of the build out considerations yeah. going through the, the city of like, Austin yeah. construction permitting and everything is just kind of a, a nightmare. And, so, uh, so now that this thing, because it starts as a series of diagrams, you buy these kind of invoice and invoice after. Equipment, you got to buy hoses. So many hoses. Is it, you guys have a lot of hoses too? <laughs> a lot of yeah. hoses and clamps. And clamps, screws. so many clamps, so many hoses, so many pumps. Yeah, we have to use yeah. different kinds of pumps because our stuff's more flammable. Oh, right? oh, so you got to yeah. use like two different kinds. You can do something that's low. You can use an electric pump it's pretty fast. Uh-huh. And then something that's flammable, like really flammable, you have to use an air pressure pump, a diaphragm pump. So oh, it's like, really? Yeah, dude. Uh-huh. It's, so these kinds of things, did you ever say, shit? What have I done? Because <laughs> there's so much stuff. You know? Yeah. Well, at that point, no, I didn't say that. It was later on <laughs> once <laughs> once things started operating. And I, I would say out of the gates, we had, it was always hard. I mean, it's one thing to build the place and get it operational. And then yeah. it's another uh, thing to just kind of see how everything pans out. And some things panned out quite nicely. And then... 
a lot of thing or other things we just started finding all these problems that we didn't even know were going to be problems so exactly. you know that kind of gets us into uh sour mashing and and building a brewery unlike any other where we only do these uh pre-fermentation wort sour yeah, yeah. beers and there's not a lot of literature out there for that. There's no like direct literature where you can, you know, read a how to brew book. It's not like a how to brew sour beer uh, book like the way we're doing it. Um, there's a lot of barrel aged kind of information sure, out sure. there, but but we're not using any of that. So, you know, there was some experience that I had that what I was going off of. We we did a little bit of research, like a reasonable amount of, of research mm. with white labs to, to study some things, oh, yeah. you know, plenty of uh, engineering uh, talks with our equipment manufacturer to make sure that, you know, we could control everything. But then once you get rolling, you start finding the things going wrong that you didn't even think oh, could have man, gone no wrong. kidding. Uh, it's like the Apollo 13 mission. <laughs> everything looks good. The checks, they're all checked yeah, off. Yeah. And you get up, they're like, everything oh. Everything was a go. <laughs> we, everything was a go, but we blew a disc. Shit. <laughs> now, with all of this stuff and more limitations, how do we make it work? And so yeah. were you thinking that the sour, that approach was absolutely going to be the thread through all the products for you? Uh, initially, the idea was to do half sours, half session ales because mm-hmm. those were the two coolest things at the yeah. time uh but kind of i don't know pretty quickly after that idea really started leaning towards just pure sour because I, I was just thinking there's so much we don't know and i feel like there's so much opportunity there mm. that i just kind of I, I feel like the people that you know are really going to get ahead are the ones that just delve into it you know, all the way. Yeah. You know, no. Because it's still kind no of an edging. Is it? Is it, no edging. Yes, that's that's a good point, right? <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's a relatively. Would you consider an, a more esoteric style, or is it still pretty what mainstream for people's palate? At least that the market dictates. Yeah, you know, Austin's Austin's probably you know a lot lot more knowledgeable in, in general because yeah. with Jester King, you know, being around for for five or six years and. You know, people kind of understanding at least a form of it. Right, right. It hasn't been a huge challenge, and that's probably what gave me the confidence to say, you know, let's go all in because yeah. I think we're not a huge brewery. We can probably sell all that we can make. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, yeah, Amazing which is thing. great. But you know, is it going to be something that, that is going to expand? And um, I feel it is. But it's it's going to be challenging because we're already there's a lot of discussions in the industry with sour being very popular thing right now with really trying to define what it is, what it isn't, how to convey it to your consumer. Yeah. Uh, the Craft Brewers Conference, there was a whole panel seminar about, you know, what are we doing here? Basically, that was an open forum of mm-hmm. just like, just just talking about what the hell we're doing. <laughs> uh, trying to like get on the same page with everybody. Um, Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Brewers again, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Light bulb. It's hard to get those guys to, to rally against any single thing. Yeah. So much intelligence and so much egotism. Yeah. Same thing in spirits. So don't get me wrong, but, you know. Is there? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know. How someone can, some of these, pro- and I'm sure you feel that the same way, but not putting words in your mouth, but sometimes you'll taste something. It's like, this fucking guy basically sells this as the best spirit, this, you know, this side of heaven. Like, it's a mm-hmm. brilliant thing. And then you taste it like, I don't know how he can do that. Yeah, how he can yeah. look himself in the face. Yeah, you, that, without obviously without anybody specifically. Do you taste stuff in the market? You're like absolutely. What absolutely. the hell? Yeah, yep. yep. And and I, I think that's where a lot of frustration within the industry comes from. Is a lot of the legitimate people that are delving into either post fermentation or pre fermentation souring uh, and trying to learn and trying to educate and trying to get on the same page, like. You know, they're they're not the problem. It's it's the other people that are maybe trying to just grab hold of something, take advantage of it, mm-hmm. say, you know, we have this sour beer, uh, we're going to charge twenty dollars a bottle because Cash we grab, see these man. other ones. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I guess it's probably like any other industry. Sure. Um. So there's there's a bit of frustration there, but I think, uh, I think it's gonna it's all kind of level out, work its way out, and I, I think we've already seen this in history with with IPAs and, and bitterness, how mm-hmm. that was virtually nothing until you know around the 90s and then right. all of a sudden it just uh, everything started becoming extreme and then you started getting <laughs> barrels and barley right, wines right. and IP, double ipas and then you know once that kind of turbulence 
settles down, you're left with a style that's, that's insanely popular, which is, I wouldn't say it's a style, I mean, hops. Uh-huh. You know, people like have this great appreciation for hops. And what we've done with it is now taken that appreciation and applied it to all these different styles, mm-hmm. you know, hoppy reds or, or a session hoppy or a Belgian hoppy. You know, it's like all these different things. And I, I feel like it's sour is going to be the same thing as once we mature as an industry, uh, you're going to see not just this sour beer kind of tastes like a sour beer. It's like here's a, a sour Czech style Pilsner. What does that taste like? How, yeah. uh, you know, and then you can almost compare it eventually a, to, to somebody else that's making a sour Czech style Pilsner. Yeah. Um, and Which is like really subdividing up the classifications in a, a brilliant way, <laughs> right? It is. And it's what happened with, with the hops. Like, you know, even if you look at like GABF and uh, uh, the Great American Beer Festival and, and uh, competitions like that that have mm-hmm. categories that you get judged in, the categories keep expanding and there's always a lot of debate on, you know, should this be a subcategory? Is this a category in its own right? right? You know, are these beers, there's still plenty of beers out there that don't really have a category. Do we even need to categorize beers? You know, right, right. all these conversations and I find it really interesting. Um, but to me at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I would be very disappointed if everything has been done. Mm-hmm. And at, at a point I was starting to feel like that where people just started you know, okay, we've done everything we can with hops. Now let's just start adding weird shit into, you know, every different beer right, that we right. can. It's and, just like weird for weird sake, which I think yeah. is the worst thing. Yeah, yeah. It's not artful. Right? <laughs> it really wasn't. Or, you know, maybe, I'm sure there was a spectrum of it, uh, you know, people doing it respectfully and yeah. everyone's just throwing shit in there. To but it's just like, you, so you've been in Austin long enough to see the styles change, like the fashion change. Mm-hmm. And so you know how some people, so I still still think brown and black work. Fuck anyone else. But, but anyway, so, but I, I kind of have a hard time seeing color sometimes. But anyway, that aside, <laughs> but I see people, it, this, and it's just a perfect canal or rather a perfect metaphor for beer in the same way. It's like they're intentionally being fashion forward, quote unquote, mm-hmm. okay? But by trying to make two things, two completely dissimilar things, work for no reason, like overalls and <laughs> like a weird checkered red, white, and blue. A shirt or something right yeah, like yeah. and so i just feel like this is this people they're so afraid of being the same and they're always so afraid of being accessible yeah that they rally against that yeah yeah and i, I think i feel like you can almost categorize that in three different ways it's kind of like the people that do that just to be different without right. any sort of you know there's no real inspiration there yeah um or you could find the people that uh do that but Occasionally, kind of something sticks, and and you find like something that does kind of right, right. I don't know, skinny jean. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a no. Good there's example. bound to be something that works. Something yeah, works, and yeah. then it's like okay, now that's a thing. It's like oh, uh, and then the people that just didn't even try or didn't didn't go over that va- uh, that uh, um, abyss, mm. <laughs> just abyss. one day had uh, this intuition kind of jump, yeah, and said like I think this would look cool. Um, I don't know where Blue Owl falls and all of that kind of. Hey, let me think, because I never, never said that little analogy before. Where would Blue Owl fall and and those kind of things? Yeah, how esoteric but, are you? Because you seem sincere, so I can't imagine you're trying to make it weird for weird's sake. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of I don't know, maybe a combination of the last two. Yeah, yeah. Because a part of me is still just kind of like because we don't know. You kind of just have to try a lot of things. Oh, sure, so we are sure. trying a lot of things just for the sake of basically trying them. But you can do those in smart ways and have more things more often stick. Yeah. Maybe I can do that in a little more respectful than I said it initially. <laughs> uh, but then the other side is, you know, every once in a while, you're just like, wow, that makes so much sense. Uh, Bacon and chocolate. Yeah. Case in point. Case in point, yeah. No one would have thought. But yeah. salt, and it's salt on like yeah. anything. Yeah. It's just amazing. The umami, right? That is a con- it just completely works. It always works. Yeah. So when you got you got up and running, it seemed like forecasting worked really well. And there's a couple of things I want to touch on. But what was the first can, the first product, your first baby that made it out the door? Uh, I think we started with draft, and I think it was Van Dam, which is Van Dam, maybe a tragedy. Because Van Dam was also the first beer that we stopped producing. Okay. Um, it was, 
John Claude was suing, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we we have tried to get him to sue. We keep using his picture in like different ads and things. Just we just want him to sue us. <laughs> you have a shirt that says beer sport on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um because out of the four beers that we started with, I felt like three of them had quite quite a home, a well defined home. The mm. the hoppy, pale, the the roasty, um, sour cherry, and the the tart light wheat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Van Dam just never quite found uh, its own identity, mm-hmm. and you know people liked it, and, and we were brewing it, and we had you know some success. And I was trying to trying to get it better every time, but you know at some point when it starts becoming a hindrance, and, and you know you just need to trim some fat, right? Is a harsh way to say it. Uh, you know, you, you can't be afraid to say, I'm going to put this on the back burner. Absolutely. And, you, know, you can't force back. passion, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like either this works or it doesn't. If I have to keep, it's like relationships. Products are very much like children and or people that you've had <laughs> relationships with. Either this shit works yeah. or it doesn't. And if it becomes too hard, there's a reason it's becoming too hard. And that's because you got to move on and find your yeah. next. Children are just like this. If they're too hard, you just got to move on. Totally. And try try That's, another one. Just leave them. Leave them somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where. Like a home, a home I guess. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any kids. I don't know. I'm very, very uh, not not in tune with being a father. Uh, I don't suspect I will be. But so you had to ditch. God, this sounds like a terrible world, but it just didn't fit. The Van yeah, it just didn't work. And, um, you know, I, it takes takes a little bit of kind of business maturity to say to not just have this pride and and maybe this goes back to that first category of people trying to put trying to force you know something just to work oh yeah uh where you know tried didn't work um but we're actually it's coming back for the first time in a year uh, really or a little less than a year i guess uh that beer is coming back here soon i started thinking about it again because uh maybe more of kind of a leap of intuition uh, thought, wow, we could put some really nice fresh hops and let that be maybe the the star of the show. Mm-hmm. And maybe that was one of the problems with this beer originally was it was just too, there was nothing that stood out about it. And that's really hard to really impress upon people or, or have your branding say something mm-hmm. about, you know, this this cast of actors where you don't have any like big actors. What's the star quality of the beer, right? Like how yeah, do you what's, sell it? Yeah, yeah. And uh the other three kinda had that and, and this one didn't and the recipe just kinda wasn't quite coming out right. So put it on the back burner and, and you know, I would have been fine never brewing it again. But I, I think I have an idea that I think is gonna work for it and it we're, gonna, we're back, gonna roll right? it out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll it see does. how it goes. You I've I've got a some similar relationship with a few of our products and it's like I tried to push it away. Yeah. Right. I'm like, I'm, we're gonna move on to this other thing. It keeps pulling you back. Yeah. <laughs> it just does, and you can't turn your back to it. But that's the yeah. brilliant thing about having these children, having these products. You know. Yeah. It's quite good. So, what would you say is the is one of the the skews? I'll call them skews. Is it more mm-hmm. successful than the others? Is it more accessible? Um. Yeah. The easy way to to answer that, I guess, is. Uh, spirit animal or sour pale ale is our biggest seller we have no issue selling that it's it's hops and it's sour mm-hmm. and everyone goes crazy over it yeah. just really works and and i love it i think it's you know it's a great beer um but there's also say something like professor black which is our sour cherry stout that pe- that gets a lot more hype about yeah. it we don't it just sounds incredibly interesting yeah yeah yeah, yeah that was one of those that was on the very end of that those three categories where um just sounded like it would work to me there was no yeah. like trial and error of of you know these stout these sour stouts it was just like i think that's going to be awesome and it and it just worked yeah uh, that's a that's how you know it's a good a good one yeah you yeah it's very natural so very yeah. yeah um i forget what i was talking about now so you got those the one two but there's is there a third as well you have like a uh, normal yeah and then uh little boss which is our sour session wheat that I think is is you know it's perfect for this weather. It's low in alcohol. It's light, refreshing. It's got a little bit of hop character. It doesn't really have a, a I guess a star of the show, other than I think it's more kind of ubiquitous for or, or what I hope is ubiquitous for kind of like the Austin 
weather yeah. and, and, okay. and you know scene is, is, is it that, like the george harrison it's got such heart but it only comes yeah. through and shines like every ever so often <laughs> <laughs> yes sure i'll take it yeah i keep doing be- <laughs> man i Beatles is like the best metaphor for me to yeah. talk about the players because Lennon and anywhere. McCartney, like those two things, you easily can gin, uh-huh. is McCartney, whiskey, Lennon, anything way easy, easy. <laughs> so it just writes itself. Yeah, right? it, it writes itself. <laughs> so, but that's and then you guys have a couple, what we'd consider not seasonal but like limited release too. Yeah, you know we've been open less than a year, um, so we're just we're. Maybe now these these kind of seasonal things we're brewing every two months. We'll have a new one. Oh wow! And I'm really trying to even even if we know something's going to work really well. If there's a style or we've done a test batch that was just awesome. Mm. Um, what I'm really trying to do with these seasonals is hit some foundational kind of categories. Hit hit more. Um, Base level uh, styles like the the uh, saison. Yeah. Okay. So you know saison's a, a rather standard style. Mm-hmm. Um, you know here's here's what we're doing when we do a saison. Here's uh, a Belgian beer. Here's here's how we do that. And then now we're getting into um, the Czech style pilsner, uh, and that was kind of one that was is a little wild because there's really nothing out there like this yeah, yeah. this beer. Uh, and it turned out fantastic. Do you have a clever name for it yet? Uh, we call it Check Check. Ah, yes. That's good. <laughs> I was thinking Checkmate, Checkmark. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of surprised that Check Check wasn't taken. And it's it, so, I don't know, it just it, <laughs> I find myself saying that occasionally, like, yep, Check Check, you know, just like for, <laughs> for any reason. Uh, so that worked out really well. And then the next one that we, we know is going to work, and I almost didn't want to do it because I feel like it's almost going to be too easy as a too sour easy. IPA. Yeah, yeah, but you, I mean, you're a businessman at heart, right? I know. And that's why it's like, yeah, we, we know it might be right and pour some sugar on me. Like, we know that people will <laughs> right, chant this shit, right. but it's still, it's still worth doing. It yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be great. I don't know. I, I think I get... I, I love those. Nothing wrong with those, but sometimes you get a little more satisfaction out of the ones working that you didn't, never expected or yeah. that you had to work really hard. Uh, I, there's always... I have something against, say, like Vulcan or, or Rye IPA. Mm-hmm. Black Star was our most popular beer, but that was another one that just... First time I brewed it, like on a test batch, I was like, yeah, that's it. We're done. And then hardly ever deviated from yeah. that like in the next eight years or whatever it was and it's like that was too easy yeah yeah I was like guilty so, it's like when a relationship is too stable and then uh-huh. someone starts going batshit just because they're trying to make it exciting spice it up a little yeah, bit it's or... like, all right all right i can see what you're doing no need to throw plates against the wall yeah. i get it we can talk this out you know. right but that, it's that's kind of how it happens so yeah. as most brewers do they drink bourbon so quickly we're drinking a mixture mm-hmm. single barrel 10 year 40, mid 40s ABV. How do you feel about this? I saw your eyes light up when you sipped it, so I knew you. I was hoping you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first thing was was the nose on it. it was it just seemed very rich and and I don't know if like dark chocolatey is is an aroma too. Like you can yeah. really get that, but there. I'm and I'm used to drinking you know some lighter kind of peaty, right, right, right. Um, not not anything sweet, really dry kind of thing. This is uh, sultry, man. Yeah, <laughs> sultry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Deep and sultry. Yeah. It's, you know it. It's sexy. Yeah, it really I'll is. I'll give you that. Yeah. Whereas you know I like refined, buttoned up. That's all good, sophisticated. Sometimes bourbon is the thing. It's like the George Thorough good. It's, <laughs> it's like a dude wailing on a distorted guitar. Like uh-huh. no no prim, prim, it's not proper. Just yeah. feeling it, you know. And it's really, really got to roll. Yes, yes, it is. I really like that. Uh, yeah, so it was nice going out to Balcones Distillery yesterday yeah. and drinking their single malt and uh, their Brimstone. I think is is my Van Dam because mm. uh, Brimstone was my. That's their. It's like what kind of oak? I forget what kind of wood they use, mm-hmm. but they smoke it, mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, so it has a pretty aggressively smoky character oh, yeah. and and I, I i really dug it uh you know initially i think because i just kind of liked aggressive things like that sure but you then seem I kinda in, stopped... insanely aggressive yeah. i've been meaning yeah. to say something this whole time <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then uh you know I, once i had their single mold i kind of moved away from there uh from the from the brimstone mm-hmm. uh 
And then I finally had brimstone for the first time again uh, at the distillery yesterday, probably after like six months or, or maybe more than that, almost a year. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is really good, but it, it's better than I remember it too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it, it wasn't just like this kind of dominating uh, smokiness. Yeah. It was well balanced. It had this kind of caramel richness in, in the body of it that helped, and uh, sweetness that helped kind of balance out the, the, um, uh, the harshness, right, right. harshness, it, but the sharpness, sure. I guess, of the smoke. Uh, and it was just a, a really, really nice beer. And then they kind of had the same response that I had. It was like, yeah, we don't drink that very often. It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's that for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I guess we, we all have that thing, yeah. you know. It's like, yeah, I'll go back to it. Yeah. But it's not the staple, you yeah. know. You got to have the thing that you drink 80% of the time and then that other thing you drink 20% of the time. Um, this is unfortunate because they, they don't make it anymore from this year. I oh, gotta, right. I, yeah, I, I got to drink it sparingly, but it's it's amazing to what share. What would you this. say that nose is? Oh, like, let's see. I mean, I, mean, I hate this because it's so subjective. That's... I always think honeycomb. Like I just get like honeycomb. really hum. Yeah, but I mean it's all fucking arbitrary. It smells yeah, different now. Than- there's something I can't put my 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 mind's finger on. Your mind's finger. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Something else in there. I think is just so so nice and matured yeah. tasting. It's brilliant. The, these Mictor single barrel, the the batches they pick. That twenty year is also very good. And oddly enough, is not much better than this guy. Yeah. This is my favorite because it still feels unhinged. Yeah, and it's still just a little bit of rough around the edges, but in a really, really delightful way. Yeah. So well, let's. So you've brought in a couple of the limited edition, mm-hmm. and I'm, in full disclosure, I you're going to be so much better with identifying beer notes than myself. I'm so used <laughs> to high proof <laughs> shit coming off that still. Uh, so yeah. which one did we bring up here? Actually? So this one is Czech Czech sour oh, cool, Czech cool. style pilsner. Uh, the funny one. I, the funny one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had never done. To do this a little warmer now i've never done a i don't think i've ever really done a proper lager let alone a czech style pilsner yeah. which is i don't know kind of the hoity-toity lager of, is it because of those checks those guys are really i think, I think it's them <laughs> yes um, oh man it smells really good and it's you know it's one of those it's it's almost an understated style the czech style pilsner because it's there's a lot in its subtlety. Um, it's, yeah. a, it's about balance. It's about richness meets uh, bitterness or, or stringency. Um, meets a little bit of hops on top. But this makes sense to me. Honestly, sense. yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's that's kind of what I say too. It makes yeah. sense. It's it's just it's bright enough, but it also still kind of has the the kind of the dark maltiness too. Mm-hmm. But like this, I can drink this. Yeah, this is yeah. enjoyable for me. You know, that's seldom, and I, you know, and people can castigate me and put me, you know, shoot me in a corner or whatever, right? But, like, beer doesn't always resonate with me. Sure. But this, the, the acidity here and that, that sour element that is so bright and just nice, nice and floral, this works. For me. Yeah. This is incredible, yeah. Nice, nice. That's really great. Well, thank you, that yeah. actually makes me very excited. Because, <laughs> you know, I love beer in cocktails, too. And this oh, is, yeah. like, a yeah. real fine cocktail, too. Oh, it's sure. it a nice presence and a nice, like, high what would range. you... What would you do? Oh, let's see. You need a little bit of sweetness. I, gin is always good with beers, mm-hmm. in my in my opinion, anyway. I don't know. You could do like a gin sour with this, actually. The oh, lemon cool. juice might actually be supplemented by this instead. Just a little bit of simple. Yeah. And maybe some bitters, perhaps. But yeah, really, okay. really lovely. Yeah, yeah. I kind of go into the, because in, in cocktails, um, and, and you know probably more about this than I do, but... Um, you know, cocktails, I, I feel like, have a bit of an advanced uh, maturity about the, the combination of flavors mm-hmm. than beer. Because in beer, we generally just deal in bitterness and sweetness. You know, salt, the salt is always there, but it's right, not like right, a, right. a main element. But it's usually just kind of bitterness and sweetness. And then, you know, whatever other kind of, you know, secondary, tertiary kind of flavors. Right. But those are the, the elemental uh flavors or, or tastes and what beer i feel like misses so often is sourness it's like this whole other dimension there's a whole other really unused is. portion of your tongue totally that um you know some some drinks use and and some don't uh but cocktails and and you know even simple things like i 
iced tea and putting a lemon in it mm-hmm. or lemonade itself and, Absolutely. and having that sweetness. It and, makes a lot of sense, right? Tiki mm-hmm. is great because it's nutty, boozy, sweet, and sour. Yeah. That's the best thing. Like, you could probably do tiki, tiki Weeks coming up, too. Oh, yeah? You could actually make a Tiki with this. Like, with something sweet to offshoot it just a little bit uh-huh. and, again, use that natural that kind of natural acidity here. Uh-huh. I mean, rum, Jesus, that'd be incredible. Caramelly rum, yeah. wouldn't it be good? Ah, yeah. I like that, yeah. yeah. I think so rum, dark. that's that's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's so, like, you know, but I'm always thinking Tiki. Tiki on my mind, in my mind, <laughs> on my Tiki. But So, I got to thank Mr. Sanders for connecting us. He yeah. seems to know everybody, every, everybody in this yeah. fucking city. Yeah, he does. Even though he hasn't lived here that long, let's see. But where'd you where'd you meet Mike? Do you did you meet him at Drinkwell or Backbeat or we're kind of oh, out shit. and about? I'm not a hundred percent sure where I met him. Uh, I think it was. He's everywhere, so I would. Yeah, understand. I'm trying to even remember, uh, like the first time I I met him. It, I feel like it was even before Drinkwell. Wow. Um, and I don't know why I would have met him before that. I don't know. I feel like I've just kind of always known him. You like his unabashed outspoken nature <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i always like running into him he, you know he's, he's one of the people that i don't avoid yeah you know even like in a random setting i don't mind you know he's he's just a nice guy very friendly he's good gregarious people. dude yeah whereas some people you kind of avoid yeah eye contact and hope it happens you, but especially like, being a brewer you guys do it all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah. jeff i mean you're doing great work i honestly if if I can be slightly converted on beer, then that's an immaculate thing. Nice. So this is really, really good. Man. Good, I appreciate I've got that. plenty of Cabana Club, too, that make quite a nice cocktail <laughs> downstairs, which would, which would be good, too. But it's been brilliant chatting. I appreciate it. the story, talking about beer and all of that, and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon, man. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Well, there we have it. Mr. Jeff Young of Blue Owl Brewing in Austin, Texas. Has some fine beers. Little Boss is very notable and converting a very, very heavily sedated with booze palette like mine i think it was true testament to how great the beer is coming out of blue owl brewery and jeff's a great guy too very creative very down to earth and it's nice that along with this massive kind of cultural evolution in austin you have lots of entrepreneurs starting great endeavors such as breweries and distilleries and it's really a nice time to be alive and living in austin texas so thanks everybody for listening to show to v with mike g No matter which Golden Girl is your favorite or if you're really getting into the ginormous food show on the Food Network because everything looks so damn delicious, please keep dancing.